made it. We made our crossing to Baja. We came from Catalina Bay, Bahia Catalina, to La Ramada, which is just north of San Juanico, for a distance of about 102 miles. It was an eventful crossing, a little bumpy and uh, blustery during the night. Um, so now it's the day after and we are out for a little sail to another anchorage. On our first attempt to cross at the end of November, we found ourselves hunkered down instead in Bahia Catalina. On the heels of a strong norther, light winds were predicted for a day and a half and we thought it would be just enough time in which to cross. What we did not take into account was the sea state. Five foot seas at a period of five to six seconds. Blondie, who had never before exhibited seasickness symptoms, got sick. And at about the same time, Lee and I came to the conclusion that we should wait for a better weather window. At Catalina, we waited five days, checking both windy and predict wind and this time checking the sea state predictions. We began our crossing at sunrise for what was predicted to be light southerly conditions, realizing that we would have to do a bit of motor sailing. It has been our experience on crossings that during the night the wind kicks up and based on our friend Nick's recommendation we reefed down at nightfall. We were very glad we did so, as the wind and seas did pipe up, but we didn't have to go out on deck during the night. We did have to deviate from our rum line as the wind shifted, and we needed to do that in order to keep the main full. Sunrise found us approximately four hours away from our destination and looking forward to landfall. We chose La Ramada as our landfall, an anchorage for the southerly conditions and just over the peninsula from the popular destination of San Juanico. After a good night's sleep, we felt blessed with the appearance of a pod of dolphins. Unfortunately, we had to move on as another norther was predicted to be on the way and La Ramada would no longer be a safe anchorage. We are headed to Coronado, Isla Coronado. You can see it on the horizon. It's kind of that lump just to the right of the kayak. We'll go around to the south side. There are northwest winds forecast for tonight. We're approaching from the north and we will take shelter on the south side of the island. It's really quiet today so far and it's really nice to be just kind of doodling along. Blondie thinks so too. You can see salt crystals on the Dodger windows souvenir of our crossing. We did take a little bit of water over the bow. We didn't leave with full tanks, so I'm trying to be really careful with our water usage. So ordinarily I would spray off the windows with our handheld sprayer, but that will just have to wait. Within half an hour, the wind filled in from the northeast and we had our best sail of the entire trip. We reached the south anchorage on Isla Coronado an hour before sunset, just as the norther arrived in full force. The anchorage at Isla Coronado has the appearance of an open roadstead but we found good wind and wave protection afforded by the volcanic cone. The wind was steady instead of gusting from different directions, as one sometimes finds when anchored near steep topography. 
Another boat, anchored further to the west, didn't have as much wind protection as we did, and looking to the south, we could see rough water in the channel. As you can tell by the color of the water, we had the added bonus of good holding in sand. We spent three days at Coronado, waiting out the norther. During this time, we read and did odd boat chores. Lee had purchased double-jacketed one and one-half inch fire hose on eBay for use as chafe protection. We discovered it was difficult to cut. And this diameter was too big. So inch hose would have been better. Yeah. For the size of our snubber, which is one and a half inch nylon, one inch single jacketed hose would have been just fine. However, we cut up the hose. Hopefully more than we'll ever need. Lee drilled holes to accept zip ties and we added them to the anchor snubber. Additionally, with the strong wind and the strain on the snubber, we rigged a replacement snubber in case the original one broke. It was never needed, but good to have ready to go. The remainder of our trip to La Paz was a mad dash to safe anchorages, hunker down and wait for the northers to pass. A friend remarked that this year there seemed to be more northers than last year because we needed to be in La Paz in time for our youngest daughter's arrival, we felt constrained by the weather and would have preferred to have lingered longer in various anchorages. In the future, we will endeavor not to have deadlines to be in certain locations. Our last dash to Bahia Falsa, just outside of La Paz, wreaked havoc with the interior as cubbies and drawers spilled their contents across the cabin sole during the rough seas. Once we reached Bahia Falsa, which is just outside of Pichilingi, La Paz's port, we could breathe a sigh of relief. We made it. Join us next time as we explore the charms of La Paz. So until then, 